So now we can use the an auto generation tool to be able to build out all of the React components that will use those queries and mutations. So we want to navigate to the front end and we want to install uh, several different GraphQL code gen tools. So the first we need is the CLI. The next we need is TypeScript. Then we need TypeScript operations. Uh, then Then we need the React Apollo plugin. And finally, we need uh, the GraphQL. And so this is all being saved under dev dependencies. So now I want to be able to create a file called codegen.yaml. So this will specify how we actually use this, this generation tool. So we're telling it where our backend is. And so here we're using backend colon 4000. So what's cool about Docker is that because we named all these things, instead of having to say localhost or something, we can have actually the container name and we'll know how to talk to it. So we have to specify the folder then where all the GraphQL files are located. And then now we need to specify where, what the output file will be. And it will be in this folder called generate and it will be called Apollo components.tsx. So the only type of JavaScript that we want to write are these components. So we want to say components is true, but the high order components is false. Because uh, we'll just be using the normal React components, not the high order component type. And so now we have to specify all the different plugins. Uh, and that's it for this file. Now we can make a new script. This is in the kind of the root project. It's called generate. And so all this is going to be doing is running Docker execute on a particular container called front end. Um, and we're telling it to run inside that container, npm run generate. And so, so that command, then we have to enter into our front end package.json and it will run the actual command. So it's just going to be gql gen config and then codegen.yaml. And so because I did a bunch of NPM installs, I'm just going to totally blow away all my containers and I'm just going to start again. And so the reason why I'm doing this is because we're creating these volumes where we're, where we're doing all these NPMs install, installs into. Sometimes if you change your packages a lot, you'll just have to reset it all to be able to recreate these volumes with all of your new uh, dependencies in it. So now that it's all up and running, I can see that it's, it's behaving just like I'd, ex I'd expect. And I can run the npm run generate. And we can see that it, it, it failed. The publish mutation that I wrote out before was incorrect, and it could tell when it tried to run it. So if I just fix that and, and run it again, it all executes. And so what's great about this is now we can go to the, the front end folder we can see that there's a new fold, folder called generated, and there's this file called Ap Apollo Components, which is like 300 lines long, and it, it wrote it all for us automatically. And we can rerun this every time that we make a change to either the, the back end at the Prisma 2 level or at the front end with the particular queries and mutations that we're writing.